After watching this video, my hope is that you will have a much better understanding of scene management in Unity, and you're gonna be able to walk away from this with the ability to make games with huge worlds and seamlessly load in chunks of the game in the background without interrupting gameplay. This method is very flexible in how you approach it, and it's very easy to implement. So whether you're making a small platformer or a huge open world game, it should work well for both. Ready? Let's go. So we're gonna start right at the beginning so that we are covering persistent data as well. And by persistent data, I mean things that you want access to in every scene, like an audio manager that plays sound effects or an input manager, for example. And there are so many different ways to do this. The very last tutorial I did covered scene transition effects and persistent data when the player entered a door. And you can check that out here. And in that video, I used a prefab that got loaded in at runtime, which carried everything that we needed. And I wanted to cover a different popular approach here in this video, which is to hold all of your data that you want to exist in every scene and just keep it in its own separate scene, which I have right here. I decided to keep my player in there and my camera and my managers, which I only have one right now and it holds my input manager. So let me show you the end result that we're going for here with this video. So we're going to load in room one with this persistent gameplay scene here. And if the idea of having multiple scenes open at the same time is new to you, then your mind is probably exploding right now. But yeah, this is a really, really great way to build huge interconnected worlds. You have your world divided up into chunks or different scenes. So our character is going to walk and he's gonna bump into this trigger and it'll begin loading room two behind the scenes and load it before the camera even gets there, giving the illusion that it was there the entire time. And to manage resources and improve performance, we're also gonna unload scenes that are far away that we don't need because they're well out of range of our camera. Now back to our main menu where we're gonna start. There's really not much going on here. We have this text and this button with no on-click event yet. I've also got this loading bar with a white image and this child object here, which also has an image set to fill from the left so we can slide it around like so. So let's go ahead and create a new game object called main menu manager, as well as a script with the same name and attach it and open it up. So we're gonna wanna hide the loading bar in awake. So let's get a reference to the loading bar object and deactivate it in awake. Next, let's make a function called start game, which is what we're gonna call when we click the start game button. And so when we click the button, we obviously want to hide our button and our text. We're gonna start loading the scenes that we need and we're gonna update the loading bar. So to hide the main menu, let's just get an array of game objects and we'll iterate through all of them and deactivate them. And we'll call that here. We're also gonna need the scene management and the UI namespace at the top. And this part here is really important. If you've ever made a game, then you'll have dealt with scenes before, but it's very likely that what you've seen is scene manager dot load scene. Now here's what's very, very important about this. After entering the first parameter, there's a second one that you can utilize called load scene mode. The options are single, which it will default to if you don't use this, or additive. Additive will load a new scene without unloading the current one. Otherwise, what's gonna happen if you don't use this is your current scene will unload and everything in there is gone and then the new scene gets loaded in. So very big difference there. But here's the other super important thing to know. We're not going to use scene manager dot load scene. We're going to use load scene async instead. And this means we're loading the scene asynchronously, which meant nothing to me until I learned that that means you're loading the new scene in the background, not on the main thread that your game is running on, which means you can load the new scenes in without interrupting gameplay. So I'm gonna show you an optional upgrade to this in a minute, but for now, let's just create these two string variables for our scene reference and make sure they match what we actually called our scenes. And we'll load asynchronously our persistent gameplay scene, not additively because we want to unload our main menu, but we're also going to load asynchronously our first actual level, and that one we will load additively because we want these scenes open at the same time. Now, we wanna be able to iterate through the progress of both of these scenes for the loading bar, so I'm gonna add these to a list of type async operation and add them to the list here. The scene loading is still being called here, we're just also keeping track of them both in a list. 
and to actually make our loading bar load. Let's create a coroutine and set up a float for our load progress and iterate through all our scenes to load. And while the scene loading is not complete, then we'll iterate our load progress by that scene's loading progress. And then we'll actually change the fill amount. So let's get a reference to our loading bar image and update the fill amount like so. And then just yield return null so that this while loop continues iterating once per frame. And we'll call that coroutine here. And last thing, we also want to set the loading bar to active so that we can actually see it when we click the button. And I lied, this is the last thing. Let's change this method to public so that our button will actually be able to access it. Great, so on our button, let's actually assign the start game method and assign everything in the inspector on our main menu manager. And let's test. Okay, awesome, so far so good. So again, this part is optional, but I really, really dislike tracking scenes with things like integers or strings, and I have found a better way that I use in almost all of my projects now. I discovered it in an old Unity forum, so I'll throw the link to that down below so you can read up on it more. But basically, here's the entire script. We have the scene field class, which basically just grabs a string reference to the scene name and an editor script, which actually creates the functionality for us to be able to set our scene directly in the inspector. So with that script created, we can replace string with scene field and get rid of the string at the end. And you'll notice we didn't have to update our code here. It works with that field. And now in the inspector, we can drag and drop our scenes that we want to load in there. So we've got the first level loading in with all the persistent data we need to keep our game running as well. Now we want to load and unload these scenes at the appropriate times. And there's a lot of ways you could do this. You could do a distance check from the player if you wanted to work on autopilot. I'm going to use triggers because I just kind of like that kind of explicit control. So in room one, I'm going to add a game object called scene load trigger and attach a box collider 2D that is set to trigger. And I'm also going to create a script called scene load trigger and attach it to this game object and open it up. So first let's grab a reference to the player because we're going to check if the game object that entered the trigger is in fact the player. And if it was, we're going to load the scenes we want and unload the scenes that we want. So to do that, let's create an array of scene fields or strings if you don't like that option called scenes to load and do the same for scenes to unload. So this is gonna be pretty simple. We're gonna have two functions, load scenes and unload scenes and we're gonna call them both here. So the only thing that makes this look more complicated than it actually is, is the checks to ensure that we aren't loading a scene that's already loaded, and same with the unloaded scene checks. So to load the scenes, we're gonna iterate through our scenes we wanna load, and set up an is scene loaded bool. And let's make sure we add the scene management namespace. And for each iteration of a scene that we want to load in, we're going to check it against all the actively already loaded scenes. And if there's a match, then the scene is loaded and we're gonna break out of this so that we don't load the scene again. And if the scene is not already loaded, then we will load the scene asynchronously because we want it done in the background without disrupting gameplay and we'll load it additively. Now for unloading the scenes, we'll iterate through the scenes that we want to unload. And for each scene we want to unload, we'll check it against the currently loaded scenes. And then if there's a match, then we'll unload the scene asynchronously. Okay, I hope that made sense. So let's make sure we turn this scene load trigger into a prefab. And for this one that's in room one, I want it to load room two and unload room three. I'm also gonna go ahead and open up all the other scenes and add a scene load trigger somewhere near the center of each one. And so for the room two, it should load both room one and room three, and I want it to unload room four. The trigger in room three should load room two and room four, and it should unload room one. 
and the trigger in room four is only gonna load room three and it's gonna unload room two. Now you'll see up here, I made each scene a different color so it's easy to tell. As we progress through the level, each scene gets loaded and unloaded and the gameplay remains smooth since it's all happening behind the scenes. It's a pretty simple example, but I do hope that it was clear in showing the different ways that you can manually load and unload scenes in your game to help you improve performance. And also how you can load and unload scenes in the background so that you can make really, really large worlds that's broken up into chunks that you load and unload in the background. And if you want access to the project and the code, my patrons get access to everything from every tutorial ever made on this channel. So if that sounds interesting to you, then head on over to Patreon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. I want to give a very special thank you to all of our Hall of Fame patrons, Jakob Yondok, Christopher Nichols, Zondra Kessler, Fontaine Waite, Brave Waves to Binary, Couch, KB at Bird Tech Games, and Ian Oral, as well as our Early Access patrons, Ken Waite, Mason Crow, Mr. D, Jan, Liquid Egg, Alexander Prestis, Jude Greaves, Abdulaziz Hamad Alanazi, Ober, Francesco Latamata, Bill Guo, Alone on Mars, Code Jutsu, Ayash Sharma, Alex Friedman, Arne Ness Shonaveg, Neil, Ben Kerberger, John Wisman, and Danny Rathliff. If you choose to support us on Patreon, you can get early access to all of our YouTube videos, monthly alpha builds, and more.